Okay, day 337, and I just wanted to take a second example of looking at just, just the screenshots and how the screenshots, because it's kind of the series of scientific experiments in terms of checking the facts, how it leads to a, a truth. Um, I took a very short video of the sprayer home. Jason had done a much better job of this. He had a, just a beautiful long form uh, interview that helped everyone. And, and like I say, I came into this five days later. Actually, the long interview with uh, with Laurel uh, also was was already out when I took this short video. And I just basically took a picture of the back shed. And usually, you add a second shed when you run out of room in the first. So. Uh, maybe it was already there on the property, but he was using it, obviously. He was storing stuff in both places. So that obviously begged the question, what's in the shed? What's in the shed? Why is he coming and going so often? So um, I said, well, let's look at the business relationships around the house, okay? And that is what led me to looking at doing a, the, a forensic analysis. Now, I didn't use a social level uh, analysis. This, these are private investigators that I work with that do a very detailed U United States Postal Service. This is a purchase service. This was, um, I won't say who provided this, but this is a very high end. It only gave a few names and a few business associations with the sprayer home. And one of them was this Nancy Brown. Another one is gonna be this Jaquela, and I won't use her last name, uh, email. So. What's coming and going electronically and physically from this house? This is how I scientifically move forward. I didn't just you know, come up with a theory. I was just moving forward with the experiment, okay? I geolocated where all this stuff was and went to the location and filmed the, the locations as well as the locations of other people that were related. People had made this Coast Guard connection and I looked and said, well, if I was a spy, what, what would I try to uh, compromise? And so I went to the Coast Guard location. I looked at the Telegraph Hill. I looked at some of the other addresses associated with the Awans and I came up with a couple of associations there. So again, just showing people the, um, the area. The next thing I did is I looked up this American Innovations and found out what they did. And then because Imran was picking up registered mail from there. So I didn't pick American Innovations out of a hat. It's because he was picking up registered mail there. Now, if he's picking up registered mail for American Innovations, are, are what's being stored in the sheds? What do they sell that he could be running the business for? Kind of makes logical sense to me. So um, then uh, I looked into a little bit more into the ex, uh, into the background of Laurel's ex-husband, and I realize it's a long time ago, but he had this kind of JTTF background. So I kind of compared that to the JTTF background of my hunter, uh, the person who kind of hunted me down. Now I don't know if he was just doing his duty. I think he actually was with the Coast Guard, Chris Whitaker, somebody the FBI, a guy named Mac and ending in Abe. Uh, would have probably been more at the center of that, but or some underling uh, like Pettijohn or some, or someone else. But it, as soon as you, I got near the nuclear fuel trade, boom! This is what happened. You know, with the kind of the uh, parallel construction that happened in Zanesville. So I had been familiar with JTTF and how JTTF does stuff. They set you up. They there are these brownstone operations. This is Operation um, um, uh, Underground Railroad. Again, they did the video. Operation Underground Railroad, FJTTF, did the video. I didn't do the video. The video explains all the video cameras, how they set people up, how they recruit the girls, how they bring the girls in, how they get the guys to uh, party with the girls, then they arrest the guys, and then they use the girls over again. Well, and I, I looked into uh, places Operation Underground, um, uh, Underground Railroad had been. And they basically are a bunch of guys who don't pay their hotel bills. They leave trash everywhere, and then they throw uh, trash all over the dock if they rent a boat like they did in Haiti. And I talked to the hotel manager, and they're, they're n it's not a nice team of guys. It's a CIA team of guys, and it's a very, um, it's a very uh, nasty group of people. I started looking what they do, and they sell, American Innovation sells these low-light cameras very extremely low light cameras. Now, remember, I have been through and acted as a victim or a, or a mark or, or a target, if you want it. I've gone through three of these things and I've ran around the corner as soon as the session was over and there's a group of five or six people all congratulating themselves, giving themselves high fives and the next thing. I've sat in an uh, airport in LAX where the whole team sat next to me and 
was taught to me in talking about how low light the cameras could go and how you'd only need a match in terms of light. This this would be a great area for Jason to talk about is go look at this Toshiba low light camera that um, now this was in the name of Zoe Freitag, but I again I said Zoe Freitag's not involved here, even though she's the contact person, but Imran's picking up Zoe Freitag's mail, registered mail. I believe this is Charles Freitag. Now, you're going to find on the internet a whole bunch of stories where people said Charles Freitag was filming underage girls. I didn't put that out there. I didn't make those complaints. So I'm just putting together and rolling forward scientifically with the story, right? So I'm, that's all I'm doing now. That's an unrelated story there. So, you know, I mean, I just look at these three things, the, the low light photography, the JTTF methods, I've studied the methods personally, okay? Uh, if everybody wants me to go into Janine Linda Mueller and talk about actually what they do, I'm more than happy to go in and talk about how the low light cameras work. Um, if, but I don't think people want to go there. But here's the thing where you can, this lady died at 48. Now you can take people out. This is a, this is a, again, if you have, the way the JTTF works, the way the JTTF works, and the way the CIA works, and this goes back to Alan Dulles, is they make partnerships with groups. So this is the law enforcement side. There's these partnerships which are kind of like the dark arts, the undertakers, they used to call them, um, where there would be like a, you know, some kind of secret group, uh, elders who know better, you know, and they would have, they would get the word from somebody over here at JTTF that somebody over here, you know, is, is trouble. Then they'd have a meeting, and then they these guys are going to be like super patriots. They're the last check on you know we're not vetting guys. You know all these people are getting into our our um, procurement system here at Fort Belvoir and different procurement. Uh, they're they're not good guys, guys. And so then they have this secret meeting over here. Imagine this meeting over here, but behind closed doors. I'm not saying it's a, a Masonic meeting, but some kind of meeting like that. Where everybody who knows better, wise elders who know better, and they go, you know what? There's Billy Bob over here, and Billy Bob is he's uh, he's uh, sleeping with black prostitutes. He's he's on drugs. He's he's a real problem, and he's the one buying all the drugs for the Navy and the Army and the VA system. And hey, as you 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 know, Ken, you're running the whole uh, system here. For Fort Belvoir, I just wanted you to know about Billy Bob over here. He's trouble. You know, I think over time, you know, it's not an immediate thing. You don't fire him immediately, but they show him the tape. Oh, yeah, he's sleeping with a black prostitute. Yeah, he's he's with the drugs and everything. Yeah, I party in. Oh, you know, I'm sure the limos have cameras. He's a problem. And then I put my guy, Let's. I'm just using Chris Whitaker as the target here. Then I put my guy in there. I... I, I put forward to here a one or some of one, my tribe member, my group member, I put him in f to replace Chris Whitaker here over at Defense Logistics Agency at Fort Belvoir. If I get any lip, what I do is I throw down an EEO lawsuit, say I'm eminently qualified and we're going to sue you if you don't hire me. That's how it happens. That's what they're doing. They're infiltrating these different uh, procurement agencies like uh, Tanae uh, Taggart would be a perfect example. She would be a perfect target in this environment. She's buying for you know drugs for the I think the health system of the army uh, or the navy or, or both um, at Bethesda. She would be a perfect target. So that's why everything kind of lined up for me. That's all I want to do is pursue it and just say, hey, Charles Freitag, let's do an interview. Let's explain JTTF. Have you ever been involved in surveillance work? Have you ever done any sting operations? Have you ever had any meetings at the uh, Masonic Lodge where you talked about people who were vermin or, you know, people who needed to be eliminated of the system or people who got through the system who weren't vetted properly? Have you ever had any of those kind of meetings? All right. So that's all I want to do is just keep pursuing where the evidence is taking you. Right. I didn't come in. I never knew who Charles Freitag was until five days ago. So um, that's that's the line of thinking. Now, I just want to tell another little quick story to end this. I just got a call from um, Germany, and this gal is uh, her. If you, her name's Natasha, right? <laughs> but she's half Belgian, half Portuguese, and she speaks German and French. So there you go for your stereotypes on on names and so forth. Always looking for the the rest of the story. But she called me and said, George. 
she saw this where I'd gone down there late at night and she heard about the people photographing me. And she said, well, you know, I'm from Rwanda. So if this uh, story gets even more uh, interesting. And uh, I had seen all, I had seen your short video on Congo, the one that was only up for about eight hours uh, during the middle of the night. But it, during, uh, it, she had seen it from now from Germany. She said, I was, I'm very familiar with Congo. Everything you said was right. And I lived in Rwanda and we had Kagame. And anyway, she knew her father was a journalist and her father depended on this big Klondike radio. Literally, she said she's out in the jungle. As a matter of fact, she, her father knew Diane um, Fossey before she was murdered and uh, as a journalist. And uh, basically, she, Diane Fossey started becoming political, saying, hey, the CIA is killing all these people and they're turning this paradise into a paradise lost. We talked a little bit about Troilus and Cressida, and, or, or at least Agamemnon's uh, discussions with uh, uh, Achilles. Um, so I, I don't want to steal Farmer Jones's uh, dialogues between uh, Agamemnon and Achilles. But, but if you're not familiar with the dialogue, it's basically, gosh, we've gone too far, guys. Achilles says, look, we're just killing everybody. We're, we're not standing for any of our principles that we, we talk about as Greeks. We need to get back to our principles. Something like that. But Farmer Jones does a much better job. He's a Shakespearean actor. But she said, don't take any more chances like this. You know, I think her father remembered her being photographed right before she was killed. And it, she was very emotional. It struck a very emotional chord. She knew that that was the next step, you know, to being killed. And I just tried to say to her, reassure her that, you know, she wanted me more responsible with my life. And I assured her I would be. But I said in my broken French, uh, you know, j'ai besoin prouver un point. I needed to prove a point. I needed to take the great research that Luke had done reporting on that Lachine address, Lachine, uh, the great reporting and cluster kind of analysis uh, that Brainy Blonde had done, focusing everything on Manitoba, Lachine right there, and all the press reports um, that uh, the press reports that, that Luke had done and the great reporting that uh, Hudson had done about this whole rat line. Um, drugs, you know, and I had pushed away, pushed it away, pushed it away, pushed it away. And he said, no, it's 40% higher than it ever was. And, and that was a record thing in the year. And here's how it works in the opium fields. And here's how it's processed in Pakistan. And here's how they put it in the cars. And here's how they bring it into Florida. And here's uh, how, you know, it could, there's several different ways it could be coming up you know, being distributed. And this was the last mile. This was the last mile. You know, I'm work. I'm still working on the Coast Guard mile, the last mile over water, but this was the last mile on land. And um, so I had to do it. I had to do it. J'ai besoin de prouver un point. J'ai besoin de prouver un point. So I'm not going to title this J'ai besoin de prouver un point, but that's what I was trying to do. I, try, I will be more responsible with my life, um, but it just shows you the power of this medium and this form and the unpredictability and the this reach this goes all the way around the world and that video of the the i call it the naomi campbell video uh of you know talking about the uranium and uh and the rat line uh from you know uh, i forget the name of the town now i, I did a whole show on it uh, ear i know the ears in there somewhere um but that, that rat line uh, and the truth of Kagame and how he turned with Paul Farmer, uh, turned it into an organ harvesting farm that later got moved with to Haiti and then got moved through the UAE, through the Cleveland Clinic and Mayo Clinic and brought it up to our shores. And so this whole thing is connected. Uh, this UAE pharmaceuticals and everything came to uh, that address last night. and. J'ai besoin de prouver un point.